Hello, Thursday the 30th of January 2014. Something a little bit different today, boys and girls. Uh, one of my uncles and cousins in Australia has come up with a tape recorded in 1964. And it's got various members of my family on there, including my mum and dad and me. My first broadcast of the world. Although I am just, I think, just over a year old. It's a bit of a long one, this, boys and girls. Completely understand if you don't stay with it the whole way through. But video recording, or rather tape recording, audio recording, there was no video recording. Audio recording at that time was very new, as you'll hear in the tape. I thought it might be of interest to you. As I say, if it's not, just click off, OK? I'll be back with a normal short video tomorrow. See what you think of this. There's also some little family photographs and things uh, that we've dug out as well, all right? Hello, Martin. This is Liam. I'm starting the tape, and the idea is that after I've finished, everybody else will have a single private session, and then perhaps please we'll be able to have... And then perhaps we'll have a general session altogether. I had a bit of a shock when I came to fit this up at Mum's. We're doing it in Anne's, sorry, we're doing it in Pat's bedroom. And I've taken the plug off the iron. And when I got to the plug, I found that Mum had wired it up with the earth wire on the negative pole, the red wire on the earth, and the black wire on the positive pole. How she or Pat haven't been electrocuted be before now is a miracle. Anyway, here we are starting the, the session. It's not at all an easy thing to talk into the microphone um, in, in four walls, all quiet, all by yourself. It's, it's most odd just talking to a machine. Um, I, I've done this before at work, dictating letters into a dictating machine, and I'm fairly used to it. I don't know how strange the others are going to find it, except, of course, Terry, who's also used to dictating um, into dictating machines at work, and he's, also, he's even more used to talking at meetings, meetings of his customers. Anyway, we, we're here in an ordinary November, or end of November day, which means end of autumn, beginning of winter. We're pretty pretty cold again. The nights get very, very frosty. The mornings, the road's full of white frost, particularly out where I live, not of course so much in, in London where there's so much traffic and the, all the buildings keep the place fairly warm. We haven't had a very wet season so far. The ground is not really very muddy, which probably accounts for Chelsea being second to Manchester United in the table. As you probably read, they're a young team, and firm ground suits them very well. You're used in Australia, I think, to having commercial radio. This is fairly new with us, uh, certainly since you went away. Um, commercial radio really isn't in this country, except that Radio Caroline operates from a ship offshore outside the territorial limits. They've been going long enough now to have plenty of advertising and they, they, they transmit or broadcast pop records all day long. It seems to be the same thing over and over again but the kids, kids that's the uh, 18 to 25 year olds, they love it. Included in, in the advert first I heard recently, one from Billy Walker, you know Billy Walker, the blonde bomb bomber, the um, heavyweight boxer. He, with his money, invested into in, in garages in the what they call the Plasto district of East London. He's advertised in his own brand of petrol, appropriately enough, called Punch. At the moment, the, the there's a, a band record. You know, there's usually a record issued by the companies which for, for one reason or other is banned by the BBC 
good old Auntie BBC. But now BBC is getting a bit, uh, a bit with it, shall I say, and on, t on television, both BBC and ITV have a, um, a pop record program. BBC's is called Top of the Pops. They have a resident, well, not a resident, uh, a guest disc jockey every week who introduces the records. Sometimes the records, sometimes, well, mostly the records are mimed by the pop stars to their own record, which are then transmitted. Nobody cares very much. All the kids stand around and jive and shake and do whatever the modern dances are at that moment, and they all enjoy it very much. Ready, steady, go. The independent television program is pretty much the same, except that they have a resident disc jockey. Um, but again, it's records introduced according to their um, place in the charts, and they're, they're very much of a mu muchness one and another. But um, this particular record that I'm talking about, uh, it's a sad tale of a girl who falls out with a boyfriend and he gets on his motorbike and does a ton and kills himself. So far it's been banned by Ready Steady Go. It hasn't been banned by BBC because it's not yet high enough in the charts to be affected. I think BBC's program must be shorter than ITV's. But Radio Caroline are broadcasting it and I suppose it makes it uh, um, more attractive to the kids to think it's been banned. Th these charts, this place in the charts, the charts aren't certainly the topic of conversation with all the all the kids, all the uh, youngsters. Um, whatever, whenever you hear them talking amongst themselves, it really is a particular record and its place in the charts, whether it deserves to be there or not. <coughs> In this instance, we still have Adam Faith. You see him and you hear his records, and Cliff Richards, who's still around. Elvis Presley, for some reason, we don't seem to hear. He, he, kids don't seem to go much on Elvis Presley. Strictly um, British groups. And it is all groups, I think. Uh, Rolling Stones, long-haired, rather ugly characters, who um, well, you, you must know about them probably as well as I do. The uh, Pretty Things, have you heard of the Pretty Things? They're a, a local group to us, um, started in Harrow, I think, and they all wear long hair just like a girl's. In fact, I was behind somebody the other day on the back of a motorbike and I couldn't tell whether they were a girl or a boy. They, from the dress, I would have said it was a boy, but from the long blonde hair, it must have been a girl. But uh, on, on their motorbike, doing a ton, uh, I wasn't able to catch up with them and see who, from the face, whether I could tell. So I still don't know whether it was a boy or a girl. The scene is changing very much all around. You'll find a tremendous difference. The Hammersmith flyover is a permanent feature. You know, it's been there so long that one it forgets what it was like before. The Chiswick flyover too is almost completed, um, and that's quite a long, uh, sort of double deck road over the old Great West Road to Chiswick. Uh, this is the uh, linking up with the new M4. They're pretty much doing a tremendous amount of traffic engineering all over. Um, traffic engineering, this is a, a mildest new name for messing about with the streets, putting up one-way streets and changing this to you can't go down there anymore and you must turn left at this corner or you must turn right at that one. Every time I go to London, I'm really confused. Anyway, Martin, I seem to have spent a long time on this tape so far. I'll s sign off now and get the others to start. Um, the tape recorder we're using is a new one, which we got for Anne's birthday, but it's um, not a very expensive one, and the controls are not really... They're simple enough, but they're not so easy to the uninitiated, and I don't know how I'm quite going to get uh, this recording with these everybody having a go. So if you get long breaks in the tape, you know, t t um, times when there's nothing on it, Bear with us, it's because we're changing over or, or we got mixed up in one way or another. If you just carry on a little bit, we'll start off, we, you'll hear us again. So I'll sign off now f for now, Martin. Probably I'll be able to talk to you again towards the end of the tape. Bye for now. I know you're off. Oh. You Hello, Mark. Well, me also. This is, uh, Daddy. as you know, Gerald. And, uh, um, keep talking, even though you have... Uh, 
if you're thinking of something, don't try and switch it off because it's very complicated. You've got to hold it both together. So I we'll just keep talking. Right. He won't mind a gap. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, mate, I don't know what to say or do this very much at the moment. But at this particular moment, I'm uh, holding young Christopher in my arm. And uh, occasionally he does get the idea that he can uh, talk to you. And when he does talk, you'll just hear, about hear a, um, a little blur of hello or that sort of thing. Anyway, I don't know. What's um, life been like out there? I suppose in the last five years you've had quite a... Mm. Well, last five years of it quite uh, ask, Christ ask Christopher again no I'm leaving I'm leaving Christopher to, 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 to come in with a few words now and again so that Martin can hear him you see yeah. and um well where you're speaking you Martin can understand what you're saying you don't think so no because you're not speaking quite well I'm speaking with uh, Charlie Chaplin I can't speak with Charlie Chaplin yeah any more than you could. <laughs> Vincent's, Vincent's in here too at the same time. But you may not, may, may not know this, love, but uh, all this time you're being recorded at the same time. Stupid. This is stupid. <coughs> Down you go, boy. Hey. Well, that little voice was, was Vincent. And uh, as a matter of fact, one day, if you do come back to this country, you're going to find quite a change on the family side. What with uh, Vincent, Christopher, Peter. Running out of words. No, not running out of words. See, so what you want to do in a situation like this is to try and um, talk ordinary, you know. But you're not. Well, what do you, how, now how often do you think I'm talking? I'm not. Putting on I'm not putting on the airs and graces. What do I sound like that? Say it in the football commentary. Ah, don't touch that, Chris. Don't touch that, boy. But uh, the various um, things that. Half of the children, can you hear them? <laughs> the three of them. It's, it's, really, it's really funny, but uh, we have in our little lives. Kept a little, uh, you know. Oh, I'm not a this. Talk to him as you would. I'm talking to him nicely. Yeah. But see, it's, it's very awkward with. Uh, oh, out the yeah, you out the room for a while. Yeah. Leave them, leave them if you like. Yeah, I don't know. Good old, good, 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 good. Yes, you will. <laughs> well, I, don't, I, must, I mustn't take up too much of the time here. Simply because that uh, the others have got to follow so come in and uh, also speak to you. But the thing which I am interested, in obviously, in the um, of the uh, car, the, as you know, the old football business. You remember I used to run a team called uh, Pretty Rovers, which you just all played in. Well, now. Um, when I moved to Slough, the uh, City Rovers, in a very short space of time, made it up. Simply because that uh, they ha didn't have anybody to do the donkey work for them. And um, subsequently, the players began to leave one by one until in the end we only had eight players. Well, the meeting was called the last club and the club was disbanded. Well, while well, that's now, occasionally I, got, I came back to London to see a team called the Stanford Rovers, which was also in our league, but uh, a, to a fire higher type of football. And Stanford um, were a good team, but they, they deteriorated as well, and now I'm um, with a team called Somerstown Athletic. Well, this team is, a, is a, a team of senior amateur players all of whom play Saturday afternoon top class football and they're going uh, I think a long way this year still I sure I'll be going with them tomorrow because there's no match but apart from that I mean I suppose all the families 
all the family life and all the family history and that, I, I, I imagine Liam himself has uh, covered. As I told you before, um, I have quite a pool still in the uh, old standard. So if you did want to come back at any time, if you did arrive in this country, you could contact me at the usual play standard and um, I could uh, send you I could uh, send you to the union for a job if necessary. Well, I don't know whether you can hear me with all this background racket, but the two children, Christopher and Vincent, are playing in the room while I'm talking to you. And um, I think you probably get, you probably get more more uh, enjoyment in listening to those two than you will be listening to me. Anyway, the time, a time will have a kid, kid's lane and I mean by now you must be uh, quite mature in your ways and uh, I did hear from mum that you were getting married soon to an Australian girl. Well, if, this, if this did take effect, I oh, know you you would you've got a fairly good judge and that uh, you would obviously pick the girl of your own choice. So let's hope that one day you come back with her and she has for holiday and and then go back to Australia to continue settling down if you wish to wish to. But um, at the moment the uh, position here is that we ourselves are living in a little flat in Peckham near her mother, Betty's mother that is. And um, subsequently only about uh, 15 minutes walk from her, whereas now before we couldn't um, do very much of an evening, especially for pictures and that, Betty's mother comes up on a Friday night and is able to babysit with us, or for us rather, and um, stop money now. Uh, babysit for us. Subsequently, we can um, we can go to the pictures and or else go to a theatre. For instance, um, in about uh, two weeks' time, we have a we have our usual dinner and dance of the standard annual one that is, and uh, we have quite a, a good evening, a bit a laugh. And that, and I asked um, I asked Liam, Liam, Pat, and Anne to come. But although they have been the last two years, they're not coming this year because of the fact that Anne has to work late at the office and can't get away in time. But John and Shirley will be coming, and Billy's sister Brenda, she'll be coming with her husband. Yes, even she's married now. And um, <coughs> so we'll have the six of them. We took mum with us last year, and uh, at least two mums, that's busy, both mum and Mrs. Hayes. <laughs> and, and uh, oh, uh, there's another one coming now. But what with the uh, schmozzle going on here, one way or the other, with uh, Christopher and all this. Oh dear. <laughs> But <coughs> Christopher at the moment has about three or four teddy bears to play with. And um, if, if he uh, if he does um, get down to finishing and come out and say hello to you. Speak in there. Hello, Martin. Speak to Martin. Don't you want to speak to Martin? Say hello. No. No. I think you want to play with it more to speak, don't you? No. Uh, Say hello. Uh, there you are. All cockney. Hello. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Martin. Bye -bye. Uncle Martin. Say bye bye, Uncle Martin. Good. Uh, <laughs> hello. Uh, well, the day will come when that when that boy will be quite large. And um uh, <coughs> I think you can probably can still hear him in the background. When we knew I could when um, we were testing this out with Liam before this particular well Liam had his little time with you. And um take him away now just in case. And um sub subsequently 
I could just about hear myself with the background about, um, I suppose, a yard away from where he was talking. But I suppose, actually, as far as um, family life is concerned, I mean, I'm quite sure, as I said before, that now I've probably got all that done. But in about a little while time, but probably about a year to year and a half, we should be leaving the house, see, probably, and find a house on our own. If that happens, then, of course, we'll have uh, a guard of a young Christopher to play him. But he's a very, very energetic boy at the moment. And then, as you probably can hear the noises in the background, it's all, <coughs> pardon me, him doing it. Anyway, Mark, I won't say any more because I think other people want to come in and say hello to you and say that sort of thing. But, <coughs> as you know yourself, uh, I have... Um, Unfortunately, I suppose you might like to say stop the evening stand a weekly addition to you because I don't, I don't think you were all that impressed with it. And as I didn't hear from you about it, I thought that one of the other boys wanted his sister to have it in New Zealand. So we um, left we decided that as you had had it quite a few years to um, give it to uh, give it to her. Anyway, anyway, Mark, all the best, boy, and I hope that's you do come back to us one day and have a chat, and um, if only for a holiday. I don't know whether Biddy wants to say anything to you, but I'll just give her to you so much she might want to say something to you. No. Say it there. Yeah. Hello, Martin. Just talk right here. Hello, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hello, Martin. That's all. <laughs> Darth, I can't see him. Oh, <laughs> you can't see him. That way. <laughs> you see, no, it seems funny. You, you want to speak to somebody first on the phone, isn't it? Because we... Oh, oh. That was the ironing board falling on me. Yeah. <laughs> Joe was holding it up and he sort of moved and with his weight it all fell down on top of me. So I'm still in one piece. Yeah. Uh, and um, well Martin, if you do get married, I wish you all the best and you a very happy life. And I hope we do see you soon because, no, we, we do miss you. And... Um, well, it seems a long while ago since we saw you. You were only a little boy then, really, weren't you? But now you're a great big man. <laughs> What's that? Is that better? Joel said I've got the, um, whatever you call it, too near to me. The mic. Oh, the mic. Well, <laughs> I wish you all the best anyway, Martin. And I'll to hand you on to someone else, I suppose. You're going to get, um... Yeah. Oh, bye-bye, Martin. All the best. Well, Mark, I think it's time we can go now. And Bid is, I think you've heard Bid in the past, and you've, you've just heard Christopher in, the, in the bits and pieces. Like and so, um, if we were here from your boy, I'll say all the best. Good, sure we Good luck and God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Christopher's waving to you. Yeah. Isn't he? Bye bye. Yeah. No, it's not. Now it's recording. Hello Martin, this is Shirley here. How are you? Hope you're well. We're all very well. Um, here's John and Vincent. Hello Martin, nice to be able to talk to you even if we can't see you. I expect you're getting a bit fed up with hearing all this tape. We must have been on quite a long time now. Everybody seems to have been coming upstairs and uh, staying up here for ages, but anyway. Uh, it's an idea that's been in the wind for ages and we're only too pleased to be able to carry it out at last. Actually we've got Vincent with us and he might deign to say something during the time that's been allotted to us. Can I just say hello Vincent? Say hello to Uncle Martin. <laughs> He's trying to eat, eat the microphone. <laughs> um, he does say hello into the phone now, but uh, of course um, the mic is a different shape from the phone, and uh, um, um, so he's not uh, quite sure what to do. Anyway, when he does talk into the phone, it's always dada. He thinks that uh, anyone at the other end should be dada. Of course, he's he's dada's boy. Um, it's always dada this and dada that, um, but uh, he's up to plenty of tricks. 
Uh, he's always in, in trouble, emptying the cupboards out every single day. Um, but he has such an engaging smile that you can't get cross with him. Now I hear about all his tricks when I come home every evening. Of course I don't have very much time with him. Just at weekends, uh, being out at work all the during the days, in bed when I go and in bed when I come home, of course. But I hear all about them. But uh, as Shirley says, he's always up to mischief because he's just over 13 months old now, you know, and uh, he's running about and getting into everything. Of course, Mummy says that she doesn't have much time with him, too, but uh, for the last month or so, she's been coming down every week, um, at least one day a week um, for all, all day, um, and she's thrilled now because he recognizes her and uh, he um, plays with her, and uh, the, the day after she's been, he's uh, all very difficult. Um, he keeps wanting... Oh, Vincent! <laughs> he keeps wanting to know where Nana is, and, and he gets very indignant because Nana hasn't come to see him. Um, <coughs> We're hoping, actually, that she'll be able to spend a bit more time down with us soon because we're moving as you've probably heard um, probably early in the new year we're moving house and it's a bit more convenient for mum to get down then um, we yeah, did you hear him then <laughs> no he wouldn't say it into the microphone I hope you heard him anyway um, We've got a bigger bungalow at Tunbridge, three bedrooms and a larger lounge, so that we'll be able to go into the family way again if we're lucky. <laughs> well, uh, another point in its favour is that it's got another 50 foot onto the garden, and um, I'm pretty keen on that, as you might know. I say he's keen. He spends all his time out in the garden, all weekends. It's as much as I can do to get him in to come to come in for a meal. Um, but we have a very large garden um, at Borough Green, an even larger one um, at Tunbridge. But still, it um, it's a great advantage because when I'm preparing dinner, I just have to go up to the gar up the garden to get. Uh, vegetables, potatoes, cabbage, cauliflower, um, what have you, soft fruit and um, the jam and such. It's really marvellous. Another advantage with Tunbridge is that it'll be far better for me to travel up to London. It takes me about an hour at the moment to get up to Victoria and then another half hour from there on the underground. So living at Tunbridge we'll be able to we'll be on the main line at, um, up to Cannon Street so I'll be able to have an extra half hour in bed in the mornings uh, of course I still work in the city so it, it's a bit inconvenient but um, I'm getting a bit used to it by now yes he's he goes off to work before we're even up I'm afraid uh, we go to bed so late at night now that um, uh, I, I, he gets up before I do and he has to get his own breakfast poor old soul but still when we move um, uh, we'll, we hope to be able to keep more civilised hours um, uh, at Tunbridge actually will uh, be a much better shopping area for me um, it's oh, uh, quite a a uh, fair-sized town. Um, there's lots of big shops. At Borough Green, of course, there are only tiny little family concerns. Um, and uh, it's very expensive there. Uh, uh, the cost of living in, in a small village is, uh, is quite high. Um, also, of course, we'll be near John's sister, Anne, and her family, so it will be um, convenient for uh, Vincent and I to go over there of an afternoon to visit 
because at the moment we can't visit anybody <laughs> because we're so far away from everyone. My sister will also be able to babysit for us in the evenings. Um, if we want to go out at the moment, we have to get um, a babysitter, get my mother to babysit for us. She actually only lives about uh, seven miles away, but it's a bit inconvenient and it, you, we don't like to push him on to her every time. Of course, if we're going up to London, um, Mum Ryan will be, he's only too pleased to look after him and they, he gets thoroughly spoilt when he's with either of the grannies. But we don't really get much chance to to uh, have any entertainment and um, we're hoping that things will change in that respect. Well, it's not so bad really because uh, well, we're going to the Evening Standard Dinner and Dance um, in a couple of weeks. We're going to stay over here for the um, weekend and Mum and Pat are going to look after Vincent and they're looking forward to it. Um, so we don't do too badly, um, but uh, at the same time it makes a nice change when we go out. Actually we're getting a bit uh, full up toward, as it gets towards Christmas. Uh, we're going to be out on Thursday, Friday and Saturday of this next week. Um, and on Tuesday of this week we've got friends, some friends coming in to dinner in the evening. Of course, it, it'll mean a bit of work for Shirley, but she seems to lap it up all right. Uh, cooking all day long. <laughs> the steak and kidney pudding we're having, and it means um, cooking for six hours. I don't suppose you have steak and kidney pudding over there. Um, but uh, uh, nevertheless, I, I really enjoy um, entertaining. I enjoy cooking. Um, I don't get so much time now with Vincent because he always likes to help and <laughs> um, it's a, a bit difficult when you're trying to roll out pastry and uh, he's standing there tugging at your legs wanting to get up to see what it is you're doing and you've got your hands covered in flour and whatnot. Um, but uh, um, we hope uh, I'm sorry, I've got Vincent on my lap and he's uh, jumping up and down. It's, it's about time that he, well, he's, he should have been in bed an hour ago, but we kept him up um, to see if he would say a, a word to his Uncle Martin. Um, however, we, we hope when we move into the new place um, to have a housewarming party. We'll have all the family, of course, and John's family and our friends. Uh, it's, it, um, the lounge is oh, bigger than Mummy's lounge. Um, and we we should have bags of room uh, for a, a party, um, and I'm looking forward to that when we've got everything straight. Of course, there'll be plenty to do there for me as well. Um, Shirley, no doubt, will get her whip out again. As soon as we get there, there's quite a lot of decorating we'll need doing. One of the rooms has never been decorated. In uh, the bungalow is about four and a half years old and one of the rooms has never been decorated so uh, I've got quite a lot on my hands anyway and luckily the garden is more or less up straight so I'll be able to do a bit of concentrating on the decorating this winter um, I don't know whether you could, you've been able to hear Vincent while, he's, uh, while his mother's been talking here but I'll just hold, it in front, hold the microphone in front of him and see if he will say something just for a minute to Uncle Martin. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Dad, 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 dad. You say, no, you're shy. Hello. Say. Tickle. Say hello. Tickle. Tickle. <laughs> 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 there, perhaps you heard him laughing there anyway. Shirley was tickling him like mad to try and force him into something. In there, and as soon as you start talking yourself, he st he he uh, tries to butt in as well. Anyway, we there. That was a nice little speech, wasn't it? <laughs> um. Anyway, here's Shirley again. 
Well, uh, I was just um, about to tell you, that, um, of course, with moving, I shall have all the uh, decorate, uh, um, not decorating, but helping with the decorating, but uh, I'll have all the curtains to make and uh, chair covers and all that sort of thing. It's awfully difficult with Vincent because then again he wants to help, and if I'm trying to machine, he wants to help too, and um, there was a little amusing incident a week ago um, I was using my electric machine and uh, he kept trying to turn the handle it was going around very fast and I was frightened that uh, he would catch his hand in it and I kept on trying to stop him um, touching it in the end I got so cross with him I had to put him across my knee and smack his bottom um, he cried for a minute and then um, he looked at me and I started to machine again and he put his hand out to touch it um, yet again and when I lifted my hand up to him he ran across to the other side of the room and laughed his head off <laughs> of course I um, I couldn't do anything to him I was trying very hard not to laugh myself and that's the sort of uh, thing that he's always doing um, Anyway, uh, as you can gather, we'll be really busy over, uh, well, between now and the new year. But I don't suppose we'll be as busy as you are with uh, the Christmas rush. I hope you'll have plenty of parties to go to and that you'll have a, a really smashing time this Christmas. Yes, we'll be thinking of you, Martin. It's been jolly nice being able to talk to you. Hope it hasn't been too boring for you. But anyway, we're looking forward to you coming back to the old motherland some of the one of these days and um, in the meantime all the best to you and uh, don't work too hard at Christmas have a jolly good time and here's Shirley just to say our last goodbye well, bye bye Martin it's been really nice to be able to speak to you even though you haven't been able to answer us back and um, I do hope that the next time we'll be able to talk to you in person Anyway, we're really dying for you to come home again, honestly. Well, bye-bye, and God bless. Say bye-bye to Uncle Martin. Wave bye-bye. Well, he's waving bye-bye to you, even if he's not saying it. Cheerio now, Martin. Bye-bye, Martin. Bye-bye. Hello, Martin. That's it. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Oh, I see now. <laughs> um, sorry, Martin. Does John has just been showing me how to work this thing. Um, how are you, son? I hope you're all right. It's funny, though, this uh, talking to this machine. Um, I feel like you're, going, you're answering me back, and I can hear you. I can see you. But uh, you're quite a long way away. Well, Liam brought this machine up tonight. And it's nice to be able to talk to you. And I hope you'll be able to hear my voice and you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Well, all the family are here, and the babies, three of them. And um, we brought this thing up to Pat's bedroom because the noise is like a din downstairs. Um, well, son, uh, I wish you have a very happy Christmas and do write a little bit more often because I get so worried when I don't hear from you. It must be nice now there in Australia with the sun and the nice long days. The days here are very short and it's dark here at half past three and quite dark here at eight in the morning. So, um, I hope to see you soon, Matt, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, son, I wish you a very, very happy Christmas, and I hope you have a very nice time, and plenty to eat. Well, that's all I have to say, son. We're all very well. Pat couldn't talk, come tonight because she's working overtime, and she she couldn't put it off because she hadn't heard about this machine until it was too late. Uh, well, son, I, I uh, say goodbye now. The others have to talk with this thing. And God bless you, my son. 
God bless. Hello, Martin. Liam again. There's just a bit of tape left, so we'll try and fill it up before we send it off. It's Sunday evening, and I'm back at home. If you can hear Badrigars chirping in the background, it's our two budgies, Nicky and Nina. Um, probably you notice everybody sounds terribly stilted and false. If this is something you can't quite get over. Even now while I'm talking and Pat and Anne are listening to me, I still feel a bit uh, artificial and strange. No doubt your summer season is starting and we'll be hearing of you surfing, water skiing, or do, do, do you do that? Needs a motorboat. But surf riding and that uh, other technique the Australians have developed is something like a uh, canoe, is it? With eight or nine of them paddling like mad. Um, when you come to the end of this tape, you'll clear it and send it back to us, I hope, with uh, your own message. It takes an awful long time to fill up the tape. Um, I don't suppose you'll be able to do it in one evening's recording session. Perhaps uh, it might take you even two or three weeks before you finally manage to fill up the tape. I reckon this is about the end, Martin. We'll sign off now and be able to pack it up and post it off to you tomorrow. This is Sunday evening, November the 29th. Tomorrow, the last day in November, we'll post it off to you and see how long it takes to get there. If we don't see you, or you don't hear from us in the meantime, we hope you have a very happy Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year, and please God we'll see you back again home next year. Merry Christmas, Martin. Happy New Year.